All right, let's talk about the gasket removal and installation. And I'm going to be real brief about this. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, what you'll want to do when you remove the valve covers is you'll want to grab this little tab right here, pull up, you'll get separation, and just pull this gasket off. Okay, simple enough. Uh, if you ever get stuck and you just can't get the gasket separated from the plastic valve cover, you're going to have to go barbershop, as I like to call it. Grab a regular blow dryer, hair blow dryer. Go buy one if you need to. If you're going to buy anything, just buy a, a heat gun, even from Harbor Freight. And you'll want to just hold it to, you know, this outside perimeter gasket. You'll probably just need to do it for like two minutes in, let's say, this area or whichever area you're having problems. Now, it might even break off, okay? So if, if you're gonna, if you if it's impossible to separate this gasket from the plastic, just use a hair dryer. For the middle, I needed to use a hair dryer on every single one of these spark plug seals. I actually used my uh, phone for a stopwatch, and uh, for five minutes, I did it for five minutes. That seems to be the magic number for me. Five minutes, I just from an inch away, about an inch to an inch and a half away from the gasket here, I'll just go around and around and around with the blow dryer. After five minutes, what I'll do is I'll grab this straight razor and I'll just kind of rock around like this the entire perimeter of these little spark plug seals. And, you know, you can see what you're going to be pushing against. You're going to be pushing against here, so don't, don't push too hard. You don't want to go through, okay? Just get separation, all right? And don't, you know, try not to scratch up the plastic. And then uh, what you'll want to do after you go all the way around with that razor is you want to take this and you want to just place it on the very bottom of the uh, spark plug seal here and you want to just use this curved edge of this tool as leverage all right, and just push up. You'll do this on three or four little pressure spots and then this thing will pop right out of there. Okay, you just You'll, you'll feel it move a little bit, grab the whole thing, pull it off. It'll come off in one piece, hopefully, like mine. And if it doesn't, you'll just do it in pieces. No problem. One point of caution. By the way, this tool is invaluable. Available at, uh, I got mine from O'Reilly's Auto Parts out here on the West Coast or on the Western region, in the Western region. And this tool, as you could tell, it has kind of a curvature. It's very useful for uh, removing radiator hoses. There are different sizes in the kit. It was like under 10 bucks. It's a really, really good bang for the buck. It'll come in handy for a lot of different projects. The edge is curved, as you can see here. It's not sharp, okay? And uh, as you can see, the, the curvature here, it's angled. It's perfect, okay? So just pick one out that you feel is perfect for this job and it will suffice. And like I said, just use the curved edges leverage here. Pull up on the, you're going to be technically pulling up on this back side, so you're going to be pushing up on it. And if you hold, you want to make sure you don't damage the valve cover. If you hold it at an angle like this, you could clearly see the difference between the plastic making contact with the plastic valve cover and making contact with just the edge of this, which is what you want. Try not to touch the valve cover, okay? And if you do, don't, it's probably, that's not going to scratch it up, okay? So just a word of caution there. So you'll remove it, and then after you remove it, very important. You want to clean everything with a shop towel at the very least. Mine's pretty clean. This vehicle is in awesome condition overall. And uh, then what you want to do is go around the perimeter of the uh, plastic valve cover. And what I'll use is a plastic trim removal tool. And I'll show you exactly what it looks like. And I'll just kind of scrape off all of the, uh, the stubborn grime and grease there. Here, let me show you. Use one of these, okay? Plastic trim removal tool. Just use this so you don't scratch up the uh, the plastic. And what you'll want to do then is you'll want to clean the outside perimeter with uh, just spray some soap and water uh, onto your shop, another clean shop towel, and go all the way around the perimeter, nice and squeaky clean, and then uh, let it dry, okay? And you'll be done with that part uh, of the gasket and you want to obviously just pop your gasket in there all right and then what you will want to do is anytime as soon as you remove the valve covers what you'll want to do is place three shop towels still connected to each other 
over the cylinder head so that no dirt gets into there, okay, while you're doing the prep work. And then once you're done with the prep work with the cylinder, the valve cover gasket, come over here, take this off, and you're going to basically do the same thing around the outside here again using that plastic trim removal tool, just any plastic tool. It could be even a little spreader or something. But it's got to be plastic so you don't scratch up any of the, any part of the cylinder head here. Go all the way around, you know, remove all the debris that's left behind and the stubborn grease, you know, burnt, dried onto there. Just pop it off of there. Some people even spray uh, solvent. Make sure that the solvent will be safe for this application. Maybe spray some solvent on there if it's real stubborn and let it break it down a little bit and then wipe it off or use that plastic again non-marring uh, trim remo removal tool or something similar and once again with soap and water you're gonna go all the way around and you're gonna clean it up okay now this is my f I did a once around on this a once over rather around the perimeter of this one and also the other cylinder head Then I also did it here once I get it clean like this what I'm gonna do is blow it out with a compressor or you could just get a can of compressed air and just blow all the rest of the debris out and the dust and then I'm going to go over the perimeter of this like I told you with soap and water and then I'm going to go around the perimeter of this as well just like the valve cover with soap and water you want squeaky clean mating surfaces okay for your new gaskets that are going to just pop right into the valve cover and then the last thing I'm just going to mention regarding gasket installation this is a judgment call by you I'm gonna go ahead and do it because I did my research I'm gonna go ahead and do it I'm not saying that you should you do your research and decide what to do If you're gonna go by the book the book says that in these cam seals these half moons right here inside you're supposed to coat them so you're supposed to lightly coat the inside of the cam seals here the half moons as they call them with a light coat of engine oil the engine oil that you'll be using in your vehicle when you change the oil. All right, what I'm going to go ahead and do is use, just from experience and doing a little research, I want to use high temperature ultra black RTV grease resistant, and I'm going to apply just a little dab evenly just on the four corners, a little bit on each of the four corners. Both of these cylinder heads are identical as far as where are you going to place a little bit of RTV if you decide to do it, which I decided to do. So the four corners and then also on each of the edges of the half moons. So there and there. Okay. There. Can you see my... There and there. The very edge right here. Going like this. Okay. Going down like that. Going up like that. All right. On all of the half moons, I'm going to put a little bit of RTV in there as well. Okay, so that's all I'm going to say about uh, the gasket removal and installation. Okay, come to think of it, I'm not quite done. Uh, if you have really stubborn, hard-to-remove grime and grease on the outside and you want to really clean it up like you see mine, mine was already, I just had to wipe mine clean. I don't think these gaskets have been on there long. But from my suspicion, the guy didn't use RTV here and most of my leaks are coming from the front. So, and my my screws were kind of loose so we're gonna go by the specific torque specs I went down to Harbor Freight a while ago and I bought one of these little uh, this is a pneumatic device uh, air tool if you will and I just hook it up to my compressor and uh, you'll want to read the instructions make sure you know this one says 50 psi or I'm sorry 90 psi max you want to make sure that your compressor is strong enough to run one of these and then if you have the compressor strong enough to run one of these go purchase one of these I think this was about 20 bucks pretty cheap the tip here though this non abrasive it's like a rubber I don't know what it's really made out of but it's non abrasive and you can use it on aluminum uh, you can just go around and just you know you get a nice clean finish like that put maybe a little bit of solvent on there you're gonna have to be and then you're gonna have to cover up the rest of it okay you're gonna cover it up with a shop towel so you don't get any of that debris inside of here so you're going to have to make sure that, that everything is sealed and just go around the outside and use this to clean uh, either the whole thing if you want or just the problem areas, okay? That will be the proper way to do it. All right, we're going to start with the driver's side valve cover. And 
I've put the valve cover on. I did what I said I was going to do with the uh, RTV in those areas. And I have loosely seated, just very loosely, very slight, just hardly any pressure at all on the valve cover. And now I'm going to tighten everything down in the sequence that I have posted in the description down below. Okay, you have to do it in the right sequence. Uh, also, you know, removing the valve cover will be done in the reverse order, obviously. Again, just look at the uh, description down below for the correct sequence. Now, I wanted to show you a tool that will be absolutely necessary for this. You want to go down to your auto parts store. Again, I went to O'Reilly's here on the west, uh, west coast, I guess I can call it, and picked up this very small bit ratchet. Okay, you can take this, I believe this is the yeah, T30, and you see it's really tight. It just fits right in here. Okay, fits right in. And the reason you're going to need this is to try to put it in there with one hand. You need to get to that bolt right there. Oh man, you'll see it. It's that one right there. See it right by the firewall? Man, if you don't get this tool that I'm showing you, forget about it, all right? you're going to be hating life. And what you want to do is you want to put this tool in, okay, from here, from here, and then you're going to bring your hand around, all right, the other side from, from underneath, all right, from over here. You're going to bring your hand around. You're going to press down on top of here to keep that bit buried into this, uh, into the screw, into the top of the screw so that it doesn't slip and you don't strip that screw out down there. Now obviously you can't get the uh, the torque specs for these are 10 newton meters. Now you obviously cannot get a torque wrench down there. You're going to have to, what I would do is, after tightening all, that's going to be the 12th bolt that you do, okay? The 12th screw that you tighten is going to be that one. Alright, so what you want to do is, before you get there, just kind of with your torque wrench, and I'll show you the torque wrench I'm using, I got this off the internet. Uh, it was cheap and it was it got good reviews. So, oh, man, come on, it's not coming into focus too good. The brand is Tecton. Okay, I'm not paid to hype this or anything, but uh, this is the one I got. Geez, is there a model number? No, there isn't. You'll see. It's uh, oh yeah, twenty. 4320 looks like the model number and it goes up to 200 inch pounds and on the other side are the newton meters from very very I think 5 newton meters it starts I'm pretty sure uh, all the way up to 22.6 so for delicate work this is a perfect uh, torque wrench it's got that nice flat profile as you can see there so you could get into tight spots but it's not going to get it done over there like I said you're just going to have to learn what uh, while you're using this you're just gonna have to get a feel for it and then uh, kind of wing it down there all right and try and get it as close to the 10 newton meters as you can now this tool will also come in handy as uh, the dipstick here this is the tricky part I'm kind of jumping ahead but I'm making you aware of it on the driver's side you have to remove the dipstick to get to that screw okay uh, and you're going to remove the dipstick. Boy, the screw is down there. It's really hard to get to. And I'll show you when I install it where it goes. Again, you're going to be using this bad boy in two hands. Same way you're going to be applying pressure here so that the bit stays inside of the star on top of the screw and that you don't strip anything. This is the, tr the trickiest part with the bolts anyway on this side. There are a couple of slightly tricky uh, uh, aspects to doing this side of the valve cover and I'll get to that in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and just tighten everything in the right sequence now. Okay, I've got all the screws torqued on now and uh, I did remember something that I neglected to tell you. When you're removing the valve covers, uh, you're going to have to grab the screws with your hands or with a prying tool and you're just going to pull them up you got to pull them up a little bit, the screws. You know, go between the metal washer there and the screw. you got to pull them up, all of them. All of them up and out. You see, see these here? They fit. Ooh, there we go. 
the way this works is this actually fits around that metal guide there. See the guide has some play and the guide will get stuck inside of the thread so you gotta pull it out and the way you pull it out is with the screw because the screw will catch the edge of that metal sleeve and pull it out of the uh, hole that the sleeve is recessed in. That's why you won't be able to remove this so easily unless you do what I just told you. Also what I used you know, once you get, you're going to get the top part off, separate it first. Take something rubber, like these are, this is just the other side of these pliers, and I just stick it between the uh, old gasket and the cylinder head. Obviously, it's not going to damage anything, and it just kind of keeps the top suspended while I work on releasing all of those sleeves from, you know, any of the stuck sleeves from the... Uh, screws that go into the cylinder head on the bottom. Now, wanted to mention uh, my setup for torquing this down. You already saw the wrench, okay? And I set it at 11 because I'm going to lose some... I used another extension here too. This is a... This wrench itself has a 1 8 okay, male chuck, I guess. And then this... So this has a 1 quarter chuck and this is a one quarter to three eighths adapter and then I've got this T30 that you can purchase from any auto parts store okay which has a three eighths at the end okay connected here this is my setup for doing 14 of the 15 you can access this way although the one over here is a tough one actually for the one over here Okay, this one here, not the one in the very corner that's really tricky. What I did is I used this setup, plus I used another quarter inch extension, and I used a quarter inch uh, pivoting, like a U-joint thing like this. Okay, you might not need this. You might be able to get by. I just used it, and what I did is I... There's the screw. I just slid it up in here, okay? And that pivoting quarter-inch adapter allows me to get a little bit more room if I need to. And then you can have enough leverage to tighten that down to your 10. Now, I cheated a little bit. I used 11 because I'm using the extensions here. So it might be a little bit too tight, but I'm okay with it. All right, you just want to keep that in mind. You can go ahead and use 10 if you'd like. I used 11. And then this thing over here like I told you that screw I used the uh, setup which we already went over now the way to kind of guesstimate how much pressure you need to put on this to make it equivalent to 10 or 11 Newton meters whatever you're doing is to go ahead and just use this on one of the easy to access screws and you'll and then you're not going to be able to get it up to 10 or 11 okay without risking stripping this so then after you use the little one put this on it and see just how much more you're able to turn it and you'll get a guesstimate of uh, how much pressure you need to put on that corner screw and hey worst come to worst if you feel like you're gonna strip that at all stop just go ahead and go with it alright and then if you have a leak there maybe you'll want to just take it into a mechanic and say hey just remove the coolant reservoir and tighten that thing to uh, whatever, 10 or 11 newton meters. I'll buy you a six pack of beer. Give him 20 bucks, whatever, okay? And he'll go ahead and do it for you. All right, so those were just some hints I thought I'd share with you. Now, uh, I have this little screw here. Here. This here. This uh, screw that holds the dip. See, it's right here. The magnet is on it now. Oop right here that screw holds this dipstick in place and as you can see it will obstruct the other screw that you have to take off here now we're <laughs> we're doing everything backwards here geez I I should have mentioned this it's obvious we're doing everything backwards so removal is you know reverse of installation in this case alright so um, you're gonna have to remove the dipstick when you're removing the cylinder head you have to remove the dipstick to get to that screw and uh,
be able to remove the uh, valve cover. Okay, otherwise you just can't do it. So the next thing I'm going to do in the reverse order thing is go ahead and tighten down that dipstick screw down there. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put my uh, coils back in and I have them all lined up in the order that I took them out. So this is the closest one to the bumper, next one closest to the bumper, next closest to the bumper, that one's by the firewall. Alright, just keep them in the order that you took them out. Why not? Also, before you put those on, if you'd like, clean your valve cover at this time. Alright? And so once, once we put those on, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect, connect this hose here. Okay? And if yours is like mine, mine had the original factory clamp on there. And let me show you how to remove that clamp. The way to remove that clamp is to take a very small screwdriver, small tip screwdriver, which I don't know where I've placed at this time. I'm just going to take a screwdriver, and here are one of the clamps. I do believe I set them down here somewhere. Yeah, here we go. They're both the same. Okay, removing these the same way. That hose, and there's another hose over there too. We'll get to it. And the way you do it is you uh, you find this little notch right here, and you just push it up. Okay, you'll see what I mean. You just wedge this up with a screwdriver, and it'll just pop that loose. Unwind it, comes off easy peasy. I'm just going to go ahead and take this into the auto parts store and buy myself a conventional clamp. And just screw it down to tighten that. Okay. Ooh, she's starting to look good. Now what we're going to do is uh, slide this on, and I'm going to clean this. I already cleaned the coils too. Now removing these clips, again, we're doing this backwards, so I'm going to just tell you, give you a little tip about removing them. You stick a screwdriver, a pretty big lipped flat screwdriver here, you just push this back a little bit. You'll hear it go, hear it go click. All right, it'll disengage. And then you do that with all four. Go down. Again, you push down here. Here, I'll show you kind of a quick demo. Okay. Just go like this and use that side as leverage and just, you know, just turn it a little bit or push it. And you'll hear it click, click. Again, push it this way. Click. There's a little rectangle there. This will go right into the rectangle. Push it out towards the tire. Driver's side tire. Click. Okay. And then what you'll want to do is take another thin flat screwdriver. Stick it over here between the leading edge of the coil here and the connector. And just ever so slightly pry it out of there. And do all four until you get separation. And then just make sure that, oh, there are two little screws that go into here and here. But we're going to get to that. Make sure that you lift this. As you can see, this goes onto that little notch. Lift it up so it doesn't get caught on the notch here. Lift it up slightly so it doesn't get caught on the notch there. And then you'll just push it out. It'll come right out. So I'm going to go ahead and clean these like I clean the coils. It's going to look really good. And then I'm just going to clip them back into place. And put those little screws back in, those two screws. Okay, now we've got the connectors. They just click right on. We got the two screws in. And we got the cap on. Still got to put a clamp on that. Now if this ends up covering the area where I could slide, where if it gets in my way, in the way of sliding a clamp on here, I'm just going to leave it loose. But probably going to go ahead and put this on next. I believe that's what I did. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put this in. Now let me just show you. You got these two notches on this side against the firewall. And they just fit right in there. And you push them in. So when you're pulling this out, all you're going to do is disconnect this hose. Okay, and you'll want to use this. Here's our friend again, the prying tool to separate this rubber inlet here 
from the hoods. You just kind of stick it in there. And once you get separation, just kind of go like this a little bit. That's all you need to slide the hose right off. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty difficult. And I believe you just, yeah, it's got one of those pinch. Just get some pliers and pinch that. And sl I slid that down from here to there. And then you can just, what I did is I rerouted it. Kind of I slid it on the other side of this metal line. And it's just kind of sitting there. There's no coolant coming out of that. There's no coolant coming out of this. And I just kind of set it to the side out of the way. So now I'm going to put it right back and reconnect the hose. All right, I do believe we're done with this side. If I've forgotten anything, I'll cover it by the end of the video. Uh, there is a little screw that goes here too, so you'll want to put the screw back in. I'm going to clean these little crevices with Q-tips just to make it look really good. I'll be reselling this vehicle, so you know I'm just going to clean some of that stuff and. I'm using uh, this to do my cleaning. Yeah, just uh, buy whatever you need to do this. Ask the guy at the auto parts store. Ask you know someone who's been working there a while. Don't ask someone new. Someone who's been working there a while, like a manager, what you should use on your valve cover that's got some paint on it that'll be safe. Now, second thought, I'm going to use this shark steamer, okay? This is another project I'm working on next. I'm going back and forth between the two and I get bored with one, I use the other. I'll use the steamer to clean everything here. And I'm also going to use the steamer to take that residue, that residue from this gunk junk, off of there. I don't want it sitting on the paint. It'll probably eat away at it. And I'm obviously going to try and stay away from the electrical. If you don't have a steamer, just use clean blue shop towel, soap and water, and wipe away the residue that, you know, whatever you used to clean the grease and oil. Wipe away all that residue with soap and water and a towel, come to think of it. Don't leave it on there. It'll probably just eat away. Okay, I'm on the passenger side now and I already torqued all the screws down uh, in sequence for the passenger side. You want to follow the sequence for the driver's side separately from the passenger side. I had to use this little gadget, this bit driver, just on the corner screw there. Okay, and you'll want to push this, this particular, this is an 08S4 by the way, that I'm working on. On my 08 S4, Audi S4, uh, you know, you can just push this wire with a heat shield around it back, and you could even zip tie it, which is uh, the next point I want to make. You want to zip tie everything that will be in your way when you slap this gasket back on out of the way, okay? Like, I have this fuel line just kind of wedged over here, you know, like this, all right? And then I zip tied everything that was in my way out of the way and I'm just going to snap it off when I'm done. So you'll need a few, you know, small zip ties like that. Use as many as you need to to get everything out of the way. Okay, like I had to, especially this little harness here, had to get that out of the way and I'm just going to cut them all as soon as I can because you don't want to, you know, misshape the original shape that uh, they'd already, the form that they'd, they'd already taken on. Then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the valve cover again. And after I'm done with, uh, you know, this stuff, this engine dressing, I'm going to use soap and water to wipe it all off because I don't want it eating away at the paint just in case. And then I'm going to vacuum this air box here in addition to the, uh, I'm going to look at the filter. This is a good time to replace your air filter if you need to. Uh, in any case, uh, I'm just going to use a shop vac and I'm just going to kind of put the shop vac to the filter too and suck as much uh, vacuum as much debris out of the filter as well. All right, so main things have been covered, and let's move forward with cleaning the valve cover and then cleaning the coils. It's just, just like the other side. We're going to clean the coils again, slap them on there. We're going to clean the uh, this right here, the connection, and we're going to align everything, and we're just going to push it into place and put these two screws on. All right, so we're going to do all of that and then come back. Oh, and we're also going to 
reattach this this hose. All right, so I clean the air box with uh, soap and water and blue shop towels. I also vacuumed this thing out. It's nice and clean in there, and I cleaned it with soap and water and shop towels. I popped the uh, filter back on. I'm going to need a new filter. I put some uh, pressurized air through the filter, vacuumed it. I'm going to need a new filter, but for now I just want to show you how to do this so I can get some sleep. Uh, when we put the air box back in, let me just show you so you know what you're dealing with when you're taking it back out too. The bottom just has these two um, notches that slide into place, okay? So no worries, it's going to go in like this, in this position, and then the boot goes over here, one end of it, the other end of it, the other end of it that has the uh, white connection there, hose connection, the boot, uh, that's going to go on the throttle body side. I believe yes and um, make sure that you clean that too you know while you have it out just soap and water is good and a shop towel and um, these two screws on the top are what hold the air box in place obviously you see this hose right here the way you remove this is just by gently well with a little bit of force squeezing on these two sides and it'll pop right off it's pretty obvious it goes in right here and on this side you got that connection uh, there's a little connection that goes right there that we're gonna hook back up I already have the fuel line just loosely connected so fuel doesn't spill all over the place that was real easy to get out I believe that was a it was a uh, here it is no I think it was a seven seventeen pretty sure yeah but for now, like I said, you know what the orientation is of this thing. You know what should be connected to it. And uh, that there are the two notches on the bottom. So when you're pulling it out, just loosen the top two screws and just finagle it out of there. This right here, little bracket, is for that hose. Okay, so we're going to pop that hose back into the bracket here. Let's do that. Okay, we got it in position now. This is just, you push it on, and I showed you how to remove it. You push the two tabs on the sides in. You don't want to break any of these connections. This one here, oh, there we go, now you see me. This one, what you want to do is just, uh, when you're, you know, obviously just push it back into place, but when you're removing it, you stick a screwdriver right here, and just push it. Push it outwards, and it'll slide right off. Now it's back on. Same thing with the airflow meter, the connection. It's going to be kind of tough. It's on the bottom. See the square, the rectangle right here? You just put it up against the uh, edge here. Give it a little bit of force with a flathead screwdriver towards the yellow wire. And it'll just release itself and you can just slide it right off. And as you can see, it's going to be underneath. So this is going to be a fun one. None of them were too bad. I just, man, on these German cars, they're all different. It's just like it's like a Rubik's Cube trying to figure out how to take these things out. And uh, I got that thing back in there. We're all good here. I got the two screws in. This was pretty easy to put in there. Make sure it's nice, you know, you, that you got those two notches seated correctly because any air leaks will set off a check engine light. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to put this side of the boot on first and then we're going to slide that side on first. We're going to clean up the boot and as you can see you're going to have to put connect this hose next. We're just going to slide this back on. Okay and I showed you how to take off that clip earlier and I'm going to grab a clip right now, a clamp, just a regular clamp you know with a flathead screwdriver tighten that and then I'm going to throw the hose back on, connect this onto this little white outlet here and then I'm going to tighten this. This is supposed to be, I think, 22 newton meters. I'll let you know for sure. And uh, I think that's going to wrap it up. Oh, no. We still have this little air intake to put on. So let's 
go ahead and do everything I just discussed. Okay, this stuff will make life a lot easier for you. Whenever you use plastic on plastic or rubber on rubber, just spray a little bit of this around the perimeter. Okay. Just a little bit, that's all. All right, just go ahead and spread the rest of it around with your finger. And uh, what you want is you want this uh, to be facing up. This is the end that goes into the throttle body right there. And you want this to be facing up. And what you're going to do is slide this on first. And this kind of goes in like an accordion. And you'll just slide the second one on there. Clamp it down. By the way, this I was able to just pull off. Okay, I didn't have to, you know, taking this off is like I told you, like I showed you before. All you do is push up with a, uh, with a uh, flat screwdriver on this folded piece of metal here. You just put it underneath the lip there, push this up, and this will come off. But in my case, this just came off, and I'm going to be able to push it on, and that'll be enough, enough uh, pressure to maintain the uh, vacuum in that hose. But uh, if you end up having to remove this, just go ahead and, like we did over here, throw some kind of a um, appropriate clamp on there. No problem. And that's going to pretty much wrap it up, so let me do it and come back and give you some closing thoughts. Okay, and um, we're going to put these little caps on. Just wanted to show you the back. Okay. They just line up with these three little nipples. Line them up, push it down. Same thing for the back. You only have two of them in the back. As you can see, one right there, one right there. Oh, three of them, pardon me. Where's the third one? One, two, and there's the third one. Back of the, I think that's the oil filter right there on these. So there you go. Just line this up, push it down, and clean it up. Okay, so this piece goes on first. There are the two screws. I'm just going to screw this one back in. This uh, has a little filter down here, so go ahead and clean that up. I'm going to run a little compressed air into it and look inside. This is why you want to clean the inside. There is a bunch of... it's hard to see, but watch. Here, I'll show you. There's a bunch of uh, dirt in here. See all that come out? All that right there that was inside of here it's still coming out see so you're gonna want to clean the inside here it's just uh, my oh the thing is not on the little light anyway it's in there go ahead and clean it up all right and then just pop this on very simply okay like this and the other end, put the other end in first and then you'll be able to play with this. You'll have some wiggle room and we're done. All right. So um, it's going to pretty much wrap it up. And uh, oh, you're going to obviously tighten this. This is a 17. That was the correct wrench. So you're going to tighten the fuel line. And that's it. I'm going to take that shark over there that I showed you earlier, the shock, mate. And I'm going to go ahead and steam clean a whole bunch of stuff and make this look really nice for the next owner all right so don't forget to like share subscribe share it on your social media if you have any questions post them down below definitely check out the other videos in my library i actually own a car dealership in las vegas nevada from time to time though i'll do this for me it's kind of uh like meditation i'm thinking about my business while i'm working on the car keeps me sharp I know what I'm looking for and uh, you know these videos obviously help my business if you're looking for a vehicle let me know what it is that you're looking for but before you call me go to kellybluebook.com look up the year make model trim condition of your vehicle with the mileage that you can afford take a look at the high trade-in to the private party price uh, I'm going to be able to acquire your vehicle for somewhere between, in most cases, uh, 
high trade into private party. In some cases, I can get average trade in at the dealer auction before uh, the auction fee. And then, of course, I would have to mark it up. And I'm a car dealer, okay? I don't sell toasters. I mark them up right about $1,000. And even by marking it up $1,000, I end up, in many cases, beating other dealers that you would purchase from even after the shipping and so forth by a thousand sometimes thousands of dollars on an Audi S4 in excellent condition like this one as you saw the interior and it, you know you saw the condition of the cylinder head and the valve covers and I mean look at them you already saw the other side nothing stuck to the head or the uh, valve covers even after I removed it and didn't clean it it's just an excellent condition. These are the types of cars I go after. I usually don't go after boring stuff for my own inventory. If you're out here in Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, let me know what you're looking for, and I'm going to pick it up for you on Thursday or Friday. All right, that's a wrap. Again, like, share, subscribe, share it on your social media. Baba Sutty Deals on Wheels. My next project will be, I'm going to go ahead and tackle this one. I'm going to throw in a radiator, a couple of hoses, and I just put a regulator in that alternator. We had some uh, electrical issues. That's going to be my next project. And I'm going to start doing some paint touch-up videos as well. So definitely make sure that you subscribe. Uh, if you like cars, um, you might pick up a thing or two. And hey, if you have any suggestions on how I could do this job better, uh, leave a comment down below. I always try and up my game. And I learn an awful lot from the YouTube tutorials and comments that are made online. Thanks again. We'll see you on the next video.